Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. We are continuing our journey through the Christmas story, and we're in Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 57. Here's the account where John the Baptist is born. Uh, it's important to realize how entwined these two accounts are. Uh, Jesus, John the Baptist. John the Baptist comes first. His whole mission is to prepare the way for Christ. So Luke does an incredible job of weaving their stories together, uh, making sure that as he tells the story of Jesus, he's also telling the story of John the Baptist uh, because their their ministries are so entwined there at the beginning. It's John that prepares the way, as the prophecies say in Malachi. So so today is the birth of John the Baptist. And if uh, you remember a few, uh, about a week or so ago, uh, we heard about the birth announcement, uh, Zechariah, Elizabeth, uh, old age, uh, but God gives them a promise that they're going to have a son. And it's while John, or while Zechariah, Zechariah is in the temple. He's um, doing his priestly duties. He has the, the special honor of going into uh, the, the holy part of the temple and uh, burning incense. And it's there that he's visited by the angel, but he doesn't believe. Um, he, he questions. <laughs> he's like, how is this going to happen? Which we see a lot of questioning, right? We, we see um, Moses and, and Sarah question. Uh, we see lots of people, you know, doubt, how can this happen? That This seems impossible. And in this circumstance, Zechariah gets a consequence. It says, because you did not believe, because you questioned this, you're not going to be able to talk until, you're not going to be able to, to hear or talk until this child is born. So he goes back home, and obviously something miraculous has happened. Uh, Zechariah can't talk. Elizabeth is pregnant. Um, all of these un impossible things are taking place, but now it's time for the birth. And we're going to pick it up in verse 57. It says, when it was time for Elizabeth's baby to be born, she gave birth to a son. And it was her neighbors and rel and when her neighbors and relatives heard the Lord had been very merciful with her, everyone rejoiced with her. It sounds like Zechariah and Elizabeth were a good couple. It seems like they were well loved in their community and they were, they were childless. Everyone uh, knew that this was one of their greatest uh, desires to have children. So when they gave birth, it sounds like the whole village, the whole community is excited and rejoicing. It says, when the baby was eight days old, they all came for their circumcision ceremony. They, they, I mean, the rest of the community, wanted to name him Zechariah after his father. Now, that would have been kind of a normal thing, right? Uh, you, you name, to carry the, the name forward, uh, you name kids after relatives, after the father. Uh, but Elizabeth says no. His name is John. It's John. That's what we're calling him. What they exclaimed, there's no one in all your family by that name. So they used gestures uh, to ask the baby's father what he wanted to name him. This, this name, John, where does this even come from? This is a wild name. This, this has nothing to do with your family, your history. Why would you name this, this miracle child John? So they're asking Zechariah, even though he can't speak, Apparently can't hear either because they're gesturing to him. And this is what he said. He motioned for a writing tablet. And to everyone's surprise, surprise because he didn't hear what Elizabeth had just said. He wrote, his name is John. Instantly, Zechariah could speak again. And he began praising God. Awe fell upon the whole neighborhood. And the news of what had happened spread throughout the Judean hills. Everyone who heard about it reflected on these events and asked, what will this child turn out to be? For the hand of the Lord was surely upon him in a special way. People were looking out for John the Baptist. I mean, he wasn't known as John the Baptist then. He was just, just John. John, the miracle baby of Zechariah and Elizabeth. But the circumstances, the events surrounding his birth, they knew something special was going to come from this child. God was at work. All of this coming together in this moment. Zechariah being able to speak, Elizabeth being insistent, no, we are going to do what God has told us to do. We're naming him John. I know that doesn't make sense, but none of this makes sense. So we're just following God in the next right step. But once again, this is an incredible account of faith. Zechariah, Elizabeth, trusting God. Even with the doubts, though, even though Zechariah doubted, God still worked in and through him. Made it a little more difficult on Zechariah. He went nine months without speaking or hearing, but God still worked in and through him. And that would be my encouragement to you here today. You know, sometimes we, we, we doubt. We don't have faith. 
you know, we refuse to trust or we just seems impossible. I don't see how this could happen. And, and it causes us to go through a little bit of a dark season. <laughs> Life gets a little more difficult. We, we missed out on, on, on immediately following God. But God is faithful. God is faithful. That, that even if our initial response isn't one of faith, we can always choose to take that next right step. I, I love that about Zechariah. Even though his initial response wasn't correct and, and it made that next journey a little bit more difficult, he was able to, to trust, to believe. And God worked in and through him and, and restored his hearing, restored his, his ability to speak uh, and used him in a great way. Just because you have a falter in your faith, just because you have a skip in faith doesn't mean that God's done with you. It, it surely does not mean that. Uh, when we recognize it, when we confess that to God, when we take our, our step back onto the pathway of faith, faith, God will use us. Don't let your shortcomings, don't let your past mistakes keep you from taking your next right state, step in following God. The birth of John the Baptist. Everyone knew that it was miraculous. Everyone knew that God was at work. They didn't quite understand yet. They didn't know what it was going to be, but there's this sense of anticipation. And it's building up everywhere around John the Baptist. Soon we're going to see that anticipation building up around the birth of Christ. Uh, that's what this season is about. That's the season called, called Advent, this season that we're celebrating. It's awaiting the coming of Christ, uh, awaiting his birth. The anticipation is building. Our anticipation for celebrating Christmas is, is probably coming to a, a, a fever pitch here. Maybe it's a little bit stressful. You have all these different things that you need to get done or want to get done. But don't forget, it's all about Jesus. Everything leading from, from John the Baptist to the miracle that, that's taking place here to these steps of faith, it's all leading to the point of the story that Jesus is coming. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we start this day in anticipation. God, anticipation for many of us looking forward to a few weeks from now for, for a Christmas day. A uh, time of family, a time of celebration, a time to celebrate your birth, the, the Christmas services that are taking place. God, the different activities we have going on from uh, serving our community through the, the Glow on Monroe Parade, God, the, the Toys and More Project, all of these different things going on. God, we, we, we're in, anticipating what you're going to do. We, we have faith that you're going to do great things. But God, we also believe that you're going to do something great today. You're going to do something great today in and through us a conversation, a word of encouragement. God, help us not to miss the, the little things and miss of a busy season. Guide us and direct us today. Lead us into our steps of obedience. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now, right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.